Trains are weird. They're fast though. Trains are really fast. Hell, a train will get you from point A to point B quicker than my ex-wife will get from this house to the police station. And hey, the Chinese bullet train may think it's tough shit. The mallard may be all up itself. But no train ride is as exciting as the ride aboard the hype train. The hype train, of course, being a metaphor for the very external excitement that every respectable epic gamer gets when the latest epic game is advertised. Join me then, as I review a bunch of games that I rode the hype train for. Hello, my name is Tom, and you're watching The... My cat's here, I'm not just stroking a random object off screen, it's a cat. Oh, come sit. Come sit. <laughs> okay. Our first stop aboard the hype train arrived on the 1st of September 2015 with the Mad Max game. Yeah. Mad Max. They made a game about that. Bit, bit odd, but sure, I guess. I didn't actually play the game until much later, however, when almost immediately after watching Mad Max and deciding that pretty much any Mad Max media is worth consuming, my dad bought me in. This game is, uh, I mean, I'm gonna be totally honest, it is utterly stupid. But in the coolest possible ways. Let's start with the story. Uh, it's garbage, moving on. What I adore most about the game is the ridiculous car physics. Can your car do this? I didn't think so. Also, the main customization of the main car, the magnum opus, is so detailed that nobody's version of the magnum opus looks the same. Here's one version of it. And another. And another. And another. And another. I could go on. What other pros do we have here? Cool characters, passable graphics, amazing soundtrack and sound design. Seriously, the sound design goes a long way. Stunning art direction. The pros definitely outweigh the cons. This is a game that was worth riding the hype train for, in my opinion. We arrive at the next stop on the 10th of September in 2019, many years later, with a wacky little double A RPG called Greedfall. Greedfall is a weird one. It's a game with many pros, and I'll, I'll start off with the pros. I've always wanted a game, film, or show that depicts the fantasy genre, like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, but in the colonial period the 1700s. And that's what Greedfall does. It's the story of colonizers traveling halfway across the world to a magical island in the hopes of finding a cure for a disease they are plagued by. With a gripping story and a set of unique characters all from different backgrounds and factions within the game, it's truly a story that really excites me and when I play it I have no idea what's going to happen next, where it's going to go, and I believe that's a really good way to make an RPG, one with a completely unpredictable ending. Sadly, I haven't made it to the ending yet. And that's because of this game's one massive con. It's really slow. The story, yes, while unique and wondrous, is slow paced, as is the gameplay. Gameplay has always been more important to me than story in games. 
Hence why I gave Mad Max a pass with its utter garbage story. Did I mention the story of, of Mad Max's utter garbage? Anyway, so really, I have no way of telling, as of yet, if Greedfall gets a pass. Did it deliver? In many ways, yes, but I'm just not sure. I may forever be on the fence about this one. Anyway, our next stop on the hype train comes only three days later, on the 13th of September of that same year, when Borderlands 3 came out. And oh my god! Oh, it's a good one. Borderlands 3 is the exact same madness, bizarreness, and chaos as Borderlands 2, only multiplied to a thousand. Every new Borderlands game come four new Vault Hunters, a ragtag team of underdogs who crave nothing more than to plunder the infinite riches of space, albeit while fighting the power in doing so. Never before have the Vault Hunters been so unique. They're Zane. An agile bastard with a taste for alcohol and, and being Irish. There's Mose, who... Well, I mean, not to be blunt, but she pilots a giant mech. I dare you to tell me that shit's not cool. Then there's Amara, who's legitimately just a goddess. Like these characters that are a mix of magic and muscle, they are so cool. She is unstoppable. And then there's my personal favourite, Flack. A robot who has an unquenchable thirst for violence, and a love for nature and animals. No, the irony isn't lost on me on that one. And, as always, amazingly vile, and yet still somehow lovable villains. Loved seeing some old friends from the older Borderlands games return. Only downside is that Claptrap isn't dead yet. Shame. So yeah. It's, it's obvious that Borderlands 3 gets a pass. Of course it does. It's amazing. By the way, did I mention that Mad Max's story is utter garbage? <laughs> the hype train then took a very sudden stop at a, a station I hadn't expected to. For, for a while now, I had been a fan of Halo. And more recently, the Master Chief Collection was getting a suspicious amount of updates. And so, on the 3rd of December 2019, Halo Reach came to the Master Chief Collection. I only ever knew Halo Reach as that one masterpiece in the franchise that I just missed out on because I never had a, a 360. I wasn't too fussed, to be honest. Oh well, right? Still got Halo 2. Still got ODST. So, when I finally had the chance to play Halo Reach's campaign, I was every emotion ever. I was amazed. I was excited. I laughed. I cried. I screamed and got scared. I grew to love some characters and grew to despise some others. I felt it all. For me, also, I especially love the vaguely RPG-ish elements. The fact that you can customise your Spartan to your heart's content and the fact that pretty much all of Noble Six's past is redacted information, it makes the story feel so more impactful. If you wanted to be a war-torn behemoth, you could be. If you wanted to be an agile, stealthier Spartan, you could be. If you wanted to be an all-rounder, a scout, a headhunter, a fucking skeleton, you could be. And that's why the final mission of Halo Reach feels so impactful. When Noble Six dies, that is your interpretation of them dying, and yours only. I thought this game was forever lost. One that I would maybe get the chance to play if I got a 360 second hand later in life. But here I am. And it's without a doubt that Halo Reach is my favourite Halo game. And it gets a pass. And after playing Halo Reach, I just knew that the next stop on the hype train was going to be awesome. Whoa, 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 wait. Stop, never mind. Halo Infinite got delayed. It got delayed. No big deal. It'll come out in February 2021. And I knew that February in 2021 was going to be just awesome. Ah, oh, fuck, it got delayed again. Wait a minute. I still haven't played it now. It's still not out. Oh, well, I mean, it's bittersweet in a way, because, I mean, at least we know the game's actually going to be, you know, functioning and, and finished, and it's not going to be glitchy and buggy. I mean, <laughs> what kind of 
weirdo would develop a game for years and then ruin its marketing entirely by releasing it before it's even finished. <laughs> <sighs> Cyberpunk 2077 is not revolutionary. It's not. And this is a surprise to nobody. The only people who need to hear that it's not amazing are the same people who complain on Reddit that their experience with Cyberpunk was fine on their £5,000 gaming computer. Like, seriously dude, no shit. Shut the fuck up. But having said that, my experience of Cyberpunk was honestly lucky. Hell, I even have a super expensive PC, and I still get glitches on it to this day, but easily much less than on my Xbox copy. Yeah, it was a massive worry when the Xbox copy came with two discs. Now, uh, if that ain't foreshadowing, I don't know what is. But hey, disregarding the bugs, this game is pretty neat. It's a nice blend of the RPG and looter shooter genre, and one that I'm definitely going to play a few times for the different endings. It's a beautiful game when it wants to be, it has an array of lovable characters alike. Does it get a pass? No, it doesn't. But I still really enjoy it. Also, um, if any CD Projekt Red developers are watching this, uh, I mean, I'm sure you're probably not, but um, I just want to say, uh, well done. You guys seriously tried your hardest. You really did your best to deliver this product that wasn't finished at all before its ridiculous deadline. You tried so hard to finish it. All of you, you worked your asses off. Really, I wish only the best for all of you. Seriously, I, I mean that. But anyway, emotional moments on this channel. <laughs> Cringe. Now, let's move on to something more important. Now, I've said before I have sworn an oath never to talk about Assassin's Creed on this channel again. So, uh, let's let's just forget that I was ever excited for, for this game. Uh, I will say one thing, I'm disappointed. Now, moving on. Actually, we're going to talk about a game that is vaguely similar to, well, good Assassin's Creed games, in the sense that it has elements of stealth, it has themes of oppression and fighting higher powers. Funnily enough, it's also made by Ubisoft. That's right, we're talking about Watch Dogs Legion. Released on the 29th of October in 2020, my hype for this game initially started with the cinematic trailer. Word of advice for any amateurs, cinematic trailers are a trap. The game ain't gonna look this good. And you're certainly not going to look this cool when you're playing the game. But regardless, I was excited. I couldn't help myself. And so I bought the game on the day of release and... <sighs> Holy fuck! I didn't expect to enjoy it this much. Sadly, Ubisoft did what they always do and they didn't bring back loads of cool features from Watch Dogs 2. Like the mobile phone menu and the skill tree. But regardless, the button layout, the gameplay, the amazing feat they pulled off to make every NPC a playable character, when NPC literally stands for non-playable character. It's an incredibly impressive concept that makes gaining every new member to your team feel rewarding. The open world, while kinda small, is incredibly immersive. Random fights between military soldiers and civilians occur. Riots take place. In the distant, gunshots can be heard, and the streets are littered with graffiti and the homeless. It really feels like an oppressive society. The game certainly isn't perfect. You can choose a main character to your heart's content, but no matter what, their main emotional trait will be socially awkward. The main story of the game is too short, and the twist ending makes absolutely no sense at all. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but seriously, loads of cool features from Watch Dogs 2 didn't come back. Loads! But hey, a recent update came through, they've added a few more campaign missions. The single player story still needs more though. Um, and even though they've added new stuff, the season pass still isn't worth this much money. It's, it's just not. Don't sell a season pass if it's not ready to be sold yet. But even so, 
This definitely gets a pass. The cons simply don't outweigh the pros. This, uh... This lack of Halo Infinite is really bumming me out now. Honestly, I'm... I'm my, my thirst for a cool sci-fi FPS is so great. It needs to be quenched. I will play any FPS right now to to f soak up the time for Halo Infinite. Anything. Any- Oh god! No, no, no. No, not you. Get out. Get out. Okay, anything other than Destiny 2. I will- I will try it. I will. Honestly. Oh. Oh. Uh. Seriously? Cod? I don't know, I kind of pride myself on have a, having never owned a COD game. I, I don't really want to... I mean, I don't want to... I will never play this game. Seriously. I know... You know what? I take back what I said. I'm not open to suggestions. I'm not playing COD ever. I am never, ever, ever... I might have been a bit harsh when I, when I said that I'd, I'd never play a, a, a COD game. Now, please bear in mind, I'm not really a COD fan. The only other COD games I've played is a little bit of Advanced Warfare and a little bit of Black Ops 2 at a friend's house. So, um, if you're a, a hardcore fan who's about to unload a five paragraph comment on why I'm wrong about liking Cold War and why I should play this one or this one or that one or even this one, then please please bear in mind, I'm, I'm new to this, okay? Seriously though, Cold War is dope as shit. With amazing sound design, gunplay, multiplayer, and of course, the best part of any COD game, the zombies. I dare you to try and tell me this shit isn't cool. What the hell's happening? What is happening? What is going on? Oh, God, I'm scared. I'm very scared. You're dead. You're, you're dead. You're dead. You're all dead. Oh my God, this is so violent now. Jesus Christ, this is this is very violent. Oh, I miss my family. Where are we? Who are we? Oh God, no, no, no. I have no idea what is happening now. Oh Jesus! Fuck! Oh, they're chasing me up the stairs! No! Ah! Oh, what the fuck was that? Oh yes, they can't see me now. Can't see me now. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, 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 yes. Oh fuck! Fuck! Shit! Shit! Fuck! Fuck! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh! My uncle, come pick me up! Pick me up, man! Pick me up! Get! Get! Yes! 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 Go! 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 Why aren't you going? Why aren't you going? My where are you? What the fuck, dude? Oh god! What the fuck? I don't know where I am? I don't know where I am. I think there's something behind me. There's something behind me, isn't there? Oh shit! Michael, I swear to God, if you're not at the top of these stairs, yes, get on the thing. Wait, let me get on the thing. Let me get on the thing. Go, 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 go! To freedom! To freedom! Oh my god, we've done it! <laughs> yes, go! <laughs> fuck! What the fuck is happening? I thought this was this was supposed to be freedom. Why is it so dangerous here? Oh my, oh my god, everything, every, oh fuck, shit, fuck, where's the helicopter? Where's the fucking helicopter? Oh, <laughs> no, no, oh my god, oh my god, we made it. What happened to the other two? Honestly, this is so fun. And there's more coming? They're adding more to Outbreak? Oh, fuck yes. I don't care that there's still little to do in the game as of yet. I'm happy with what we have so far. This is probably the only game on the list that I didn't really expect to enjoy. But regardless, it gets a pass. It's fucking awesome. I was actually talking with a mate of mine the other day who is a hardcore COD fan um, about our differences. He, he grew up playing COD and COD Zombies. And I grew up playing games like Telltale's The Walking Dead. And um, it was interesting because that's kind of why he hates Outbreak. And I love it. Because for me, Outbreak is a more subtle, understated 
kind of zombies, even though it's still pretty high energy. Whereas he prefers the high energy of D Machine or Firebase Z, and I think, I don't know, it was cool to see that. And it was, it was cool to see um, his complaints with the game as well, because he obviously knows what came before, and one that I really agree with is its business model. Man, seriously, all of these packs, the season pass, honestly, it feels cash grabby, it really does, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Activision Blizzard, to be honest. But even so, man, I just like what there is. It's so fun. I never thought online multiplayer would be fun. Even in Halo, I find it difficult to enjoy the online multiplayer, because even then, I'm not as experienced as other Halo players, so I'm always left in the dirt, second to last or last, but yeah. I just really like Cold War, it's so fun. And that does it. That does it for, for games that hyped me up. I want to make it clear, I don't particularly like hype culture. I think it puts an unnerving amount of stress and pressure on the developers who are making the game and the higher ups who are more likely to shorten the deadline so that people are more appeased. Um, I don't really... I don't like it, I think it puts a lot of pressure on people. But hey, we're only human. And how else are we supposed to distract ourselves from the perpetual damage we are doing to this planet and everything that lives on it without excitement for video games? Jesus, I... God, I... That ended on quite a dark tone. Sorry about that. Uh, I think something funny to end it on. Um, me and my mates went for a walk recently and, and one of them shat in a field. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, obviously, but that's not funny. What the fuck am I saying? Just cue the goddamn outro already.